As you've seen, I have been super busy removing all the old generator components from inside the boat. Now, we're under Star Horizons. Because it's time to work outside the boat, we are removing, replacing, and upgrading through holes. Got all the tools laid out to try to get the, the through hole out. Unfortunately, run into a first snag. This right there is called a step wrench. And the idea behind it is bring it up here in the through hole. Probably a little hard to see, but there's like a little ridge right there on the side that the uh, step wrench is supposed to, and there's one on, on the inside too. So the step wrench is supposed to fit over those and give you something to turn against. Yeah, that just is turning with no resistance. So we're gonna have to try probably some heat around the edges, maybe the putty knife trying to slice into that and slowly pry this thing out. Using the heat gun made a big difference getting that thing out. It wasn't too bad even without the step wrench. So I still have a little bit of uh, adhesive and sealant there to clean up. And then just like that one up there, we got to prep for filling these things in. So no more holes in the boat there. Not only are we going to be replacing the water and gas exhaust through holes for the generator, we're also going to take this opportunity to replace just about every other through hole on the boat as well. Let me go down and show you why you can really start to see there's some decent amount of corrosion there at the bottom of the through hole. And given we're gonna keep the boat for a while longer, I don't wanna worry about that. I'm working today on getting out all of the old air conditioning pumps and prepping the through holes for removing because we're gonna be replacing all the old like bronze through holes with Marlon. So I'm down here in the port aft cabin and it looks like I've saved the hardest one for last for filming, which is great. This is the pump for the old AC unit, definitely a big pump. Glad to be getting rid of that. And there are two through holes down here. This is the through hole for the seawater for the toilet. This is the air conditioning. And it is, is definitely tight spaces down there. So I will be getting um, this hose off. We'll get the pump out first, but still, it's not a whole lot of room to be moving, moving a wrench down there. Uh, that's the bilge pump down in the corner. I might get that out as well. But uh, this through hole for the seawater for the toilet, as you can see, that is one of the high strength plastics. Uh, it's not Marlon, but it's one of the French equivalents, I guess. And then this one, the Aircon, that is what we're gonna be replacing. And I'll see if we can get a good shot down there, but that is a lot of corrosion. And there we go. And this is backing plate gonna come up. No. Uh, finally. It is finally time to actually remove some of the through holes. I'm down here 
working on this one. I will admit I have attempted a few of these first so I can at least act like I know what I'm doing. And if you can see it behind me, there's one we already got out. So uh, we have got the bronze through holes that are from the factory and we're gonna be replacing them with the Marlon. So I wanna show a quick little comparison and an issue that I just discovered. I have got the old bronze through hole and the new Marlon one. It might be a little tough to see, even though they're both one inch through holes, so the inner diameter is the same, the outer diameter of the Marlon is significantly larger. So it's not actually gonna fit into the hole that is in the hull of the boat. But the reason I wanna go with this style is it fits with this Seacock. So this will be significantly stronger and more uh, big upgrade over what we've had previously. Problems for future David aside, we're still gonna work on getting these through holes out. Turns out this one has no screw. It's been about 50-50 so far, which is weird. Uh, just using sealant around the whole thing is certainly enough to keep this thing tightened up there. I think the screw is just kind of a little additional security. So it's not necessary, it's just weird. Once again, the heat gun was the key tool in making a difficult job only moderately challenging. I scored the old sealant as best I could. But in the process of removing the earlier through holes, I came across another helpful tip as well. Now that everything's nice and scored, I'm gonna go inside the boat, just give a nice few hits with a hammer. Just try to knock this down a little bit, make life a little easier on myself. Got my trusty hammer and this little block of wood. You can kind of see where I've been banging on the other through holes. I'm using this because I do not want to deform the through hole and thus get it stuck inside the boat. It is rather hard to see, but there is a little bit more of a gap up there now. So now I just kind of work it little bit by little bit until the whole thing comes out. Even with the hammering, this one was still proving to be quite stubborn, but I was not going to be defeated by a through hole. So that one turned out to be the hardest of all I've done so far. Which of course it was because I started filming. But this is now out. Uh, we'll definitely have to do some cleaning up of all this before we put in a new through hole. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna keep removing through holes because I'm a through hole removing machine. Since we are working on redoing all the through holes anyways, figure now's a good time to upgrade them even further. We've got a little project today. I am down here cutting out some fiberglass backing plates. So we've got some G10 fiberglass board. We're gonna be cutting out uh, just kind of big circles. I'm using a jigsaw to do that because I don't have a big enough hole saw nor a powerful enough drill to be able to drill through that much fiberglass. But I think we can make this work. I think so. I carefully traced out the size I wanted and then got to cutting. Doing this with the jigsaw was a bit of a slow process and doing it freehand meant I was never gonna get it to be a perfect circle. But for never having done something like this before, I was still pleased. It's not a perfectly round hole, but it'll do the job. First hole drilled and through hole. Fits pretty nicely actually. The through hole or the hole I drilled out is a little bit bigger than the through hole, which gives me a little bit of room to add some additional uh, like sealant and stuff like that around it. Um, so. Now let's go see if we can get this to work up inside the hull. This is probably the easiest through hole to look at. So now with the new backing plate, you can see just how much larger we're gonna have to go. And with the sounds of Amy standing behind me, I've kind of got two options here. I think I can either kind of ground out the previous through hole because it's in uh, solid fiberglass or I can try to affix this backing plate in place and then use that as like a pilot hole and kind of drill out with the hole saw the rest of uh, the, th the through hole size in the hull. So tough choices to make here. Before we can install the new through holes, there's more cleaning to do. So you can see up here, one of the old through holes, there's still a lot of old sealant and stuff there. 
The new scoop is going to be a bit bigger, so I'm going to have to kind of sand back some of the um, old paint. And actually, this one we're changing the direction of the scoop, so it's got to go that way. So clean this stuff up, and then we can install install stuff. I'm feeling good with how this has turned out. The heat gun just makes such an amazing difference. So as you can see, it's all pretty nicely cleaned up. Uh, I was able to kind of get out a lot of the old bottom paints and the barrier coat that was up there for where we're gonna be doing the new scoop. So you can see that's gonna fit quite nicely. And then we'll do a little repair of that screw hole, put a little epoxy in there or something like that. And we'll have to redo some barrier coat and some bottom paint and stuff on the back. But I think, I think that's a pretty good test. Let's go tackle the rest of them. I have been informed of a third option for getting the holes in the hole to the size that I want. And that's coming from our friend Louie on a boat called 360, another Helia. He has done this project before. Told me about a hole enlargement arbor. Let's me do this. This means I can use the old hole saw, fits the previous hole size, as a pilot for the new hole saw. And I can then drill out exactly the size that I need through the boat without needing the backing place in place which is good because that means I can get the holes in the hole the right size that I want, then we can get all the holes in the backing plate the size that I want and use the through hole and the sea cock to kind of guide everything level when we use the kitty hair to actually kind of um, adhere everything in place. So that'll be a lot easier. Uh, Louis has been super helpful kind of walking me through his whole steps on the process. So now it's time to drill baby drill. It's a beauty! Yes. I have now got all the holes drilled in the hull for the new through holes. This is like the worst tongue twister I think I've ever done on any of these videos. So that is now all done. Now what I've got to do is kind of get the whole seacock assembly going from looking like this to this with the backing plate and seacock actually screwed down. Uh, now this is very tricky. Biggest problem is like we're here in a boat yard with the tools I have on the boat, which this requires some very precise drilling and measurement, which is very difficult when you're doing everything by hand. So I will try to show you what I've done. Um, don't judge me because I'm sure there are proper ways to do this, but this seems to work. The first step involves drilling out these punch holes right there. That's where uh, the machine screws will come through. This is a one inch screw hole, so we need quarter inch holes drilled out for the quarter inch machine screws. Now because I don't have a uh, drill press, where the screws come out with my just drilling out the uh, seacock is a slightly different, but slightly different when you're trying to machine and, or drill and tap into fiberglass can be a big deal. So I use a caliper and measure the out or the distance on the outside of the screws, the inside of the screws, and then can actually figure out where the middle of the screws are. And thus uh, I can mark that out on the backing plate and drill that out. With those measurements all taken and my calculations done, I know that 72.34 mil is how far away the centers of the new holes have to be, which means from the center of the uh, backing plate, 36.17 mil. So now we gotta find center of the backing plate, get a uh, straight line on there so I can mark those points. Now drilling and tapping for the machine screws so that they will fit with the seacock on top requires, this is the very precise drilling part, and it requires straight holes which is impossible to do just by hand. So I found this little thing. It's a drill guide for all different size drill bits. And uh, I can use this, center it right over the mark that I just made on the backing plate. 
and then have a much better chance of actually drilling straight. With one hole drilled and tapped, I want to do my first test fitting. So go ahead and get one of the screws screwed from the Seacock down into uh, the backing plate and just make sure that uh, the other drill mark that I've got lines up with where it's supposed to. Always, you know, that whole measure twice or two million times cut once. Yeah, we're definitely doing that today. Both holes have been drilled and tapped. So now it's finger cross time that I got everything just right and it's all going to fit. So let's put it all together. I don't think it's 100% perfect, but it's good enough that it all fits together and that makes me so bloody happy. So really, really thrilled that that's all coming together. It feels quite nice. There is one thing missing though. It's a giant hole in the middle for the actual through hole to fit through. What I discovered as I've been working on this is that I found it a little bit easier to start with just the entire backing plate as one without the big hole drilled, just because it makes it a little easier to get my measurements. So I'll go ahead and drill that hole now. And then there's one other thing that I'm gonna do for this. I did uh, drill all the way through and tap uh, all the way through the backing plate for the machine screws. And because we're gonna be using the kitty hair kind of from the bottom, I don't want that to fill up the entire uh, screw hole. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of epoxy on the back side of that just to prevent things from coming all the way up. But it was just easier to drill and tap the whole thing at once rather than trying to get, you know, like a couple mil all the way from the bottom. So very pleased with that. Let's get the big hole drilled. I'm not quite sure what's the dominant emotion for me right now. Just uh, joy that it's all come together or relief that it's all come together. Either way, I, I think it looks pretty good. Um, it fits in all nice and well, the through hole fits. So that's good. Just need to go do a few more of these and then we can get ready to put them in the boat. To finish off the backing plates, I made up some epoxy putty to seal the drilled holes, which then had to be sanded down. And in order to make sure there was a nice grippy surface to adhere to, I sanded the rest of the back side as well. I also had the through holes cut down to the proper size for each location. That finished off the prep work, but in continuing with my measure two million times philosophy, we did a dry fitting for each through hole. Then it was time to disassemble everything and coat it in beeswax. That would hopefully prevent the resin from sticking to the through holes and seacocks when we put the backing plates in place. This is the scary part for me. We've been um, actually adhering the seacocks, backing plates, all that fun stuff. Changed tactics a little bit. We tried using the kitty hair. It's a bit too much of a just gelatinous blob. So we're using some polyester resin, uh, so hardener, silica thicker, thickener to kind of get a nice peanut buttery consistency. Then I'm going to go put this on the back of the backing plate. Amy's going to go outside and actually put it up in the hall. Woot! Let's go! I am applying now. So, a couple minutes. Alright, my love, you ready? The day is finally here. Like, we have been working on this project way longer than I thought we would, but I'm feeling good about where we are. So this morning we got to the boat, we disassembled the through holes and the seacocks, the wax we put on it worked very well. Fortunately, it did take quite a while to actually clean up that, but Amy was a rock star. We used our heat gun, and there's the theme here, that heat gun, super helpful in lots of the boat projects. So we got everything all cleaned up, uh, we've acetoned down in the bilges and stuff like that, so we've got a nice clean surface for everything to be adhering to. We've got some uh, Sikaflex 291, 
We're going to be putting that on the seacock flange. We're putting that in place. Then we're going to put it on the through hole and we'll go up thread the through hole into the seacock and hopefully be good. Really want this project to be done and successful. We don't want to sink. The bottom of the seacock wasn't a nice uniform surface, so I applied the Sikaflex all around the edges and on some of the fingers running to the middle. That was going to give plenty of sticking power, so then I carefully lowered the seacock onto the backing plate. I'd made marks to help me line up where the seacock should sit in order to fit with the screw holes I'd previously drilled. That helped me prevent moving everything around too much and smearing the Sikaflex everywhere. Even so, there was still a bit of cleanup to do. That's pretty solidly screwed down, sealed in. So let's go get the through hole, get that all uh, sick of flexed up, and then go put that in place. As part of my measure two million times philosophy, I'd marked on each through hole where it came out of the backing plate and started threading into the seacock. That allowed me to put a slightly thinner bead of Sikaflex on those threads and a much thicker bead on the parts that fit through the hole and the backing plate. Of course, the flange got its own bead as well. All of our work to affix the backing plates using the seacock and through holes worked well as everything was level and I could easily screw in the through hole. I used the step wrench for the last few turns but didn't tighten everything down 100% as I still wanted some sealant between the hole and the flange. With a bit more cleanup, we were close to done. Feeling like that's pretty good up in there. And if you saw, there was quite a lot of sealant that kind of got pushed out, but that's what I want. I'd much rather have kind of more sealant coming out than not enough, especially because this is such an important part of the boat. Do not want to sink at all. So I'm feeling pretty good about how that's turned out. Now I just gotta go do the rest of them. We've got one last step, the scoops. All of the, uh, the water maker, the air cons, they all say you're supposed to have a scoop to help uh, force some water up into the system. So we're gonna go ahead and put on these Marlon scoops. And again, Sigaflex 291, sensing a theme here. Mm -hmm. We'll get all these put on and then project done, I think. Fingers crossed. The process should sound pretty familiar by now. Sikaflex around the edges, carefully mount up into place, and then clean up any excess. It's the day after the install. We've come down to kind of check everything out. And I'm super pleased. It looks real solid. Uh, I really like the Marlon not having the bronze. It's gonna be a super upgrade for us. The Seacocks are a much stronger solution than what FP had originally. So I'm, I'm feeling really excited about this whole project. It was, it's kind of one of those that we just didn't really know what we were doing when we got started, but we figured it out. And that seems to be a lot of boat life. So super thrilled how this turned out. And with the fact that everything's now installed, I can go ahead and get like the air conditioners wired in and the water maker and other kind of all fun stuff.